I'm delighted to be here this morning. Thank you so much for inviting me to give this keynote. My name is Keshav Pingali. This is the first time I'm attending the Knowledge Graph Conference, so I thought I would begin by introducing myself to you. I wear two hats. One is I'm a computer science professor at UT Austin. Before I moved to UT Austin, I was a professor in the CS department at Cornell. And over the years, my research group has worked in areas like high performance computing, parallel computing, graph analytics, and machine learning. Our research has been supported by a bunch of funding agencies like DARPA, DOE, and NSF, and we also have a lot of industry collaborations. The other hat that I wear is that of CEO of Katana Graph, which is a startup that's building a platform for high performance scale out graph processing and analytics. We were founded in March of 2020, so a little more than a year old, but we've been growing very rapidly. And at this point, we have offices in Austin, the Bay Area, Denver, and New York City. We have been very fortunate to attract technical leaders from both industry and academia in areas like graph algorithms, programming languages, runtimes, virtualization, and storage. And this is important because we are building a deep stack solution in this area, as you will see. We just finished our Series A round. This was led by Intel Capital, and Intel was joined by Dell, Walden, and uh, Redline Ventures. This is our website, www.katanagraph.com. And if you want more information about our company, uh, go to that website, or please do contact me. There's my email. One of the first questions that comes up is, why do we need high-performance graph computing? People are used to the idea of high-performance computing in the context of computational science applications. So you're simulating some physical system, you're using finite elements or finite differences. You need to solve large linear, non-linear equations, very compute intensive. And so over the years, clusters such as the big cluster that we have at the Texas Advanced Computing Center at Austin have mainly been uh, used for those kinds of applications. We see a need for high performance graph computing for different reasons. And there are two sides to that argument. There are two sides of the same coin. One is the volume of data and the other is the time to insight. So first, the volume of data. All of us are familiar with terms like the data deluge or the data tsunami. So these apocalyptic terms basically say there's enormous amounts of data that has already been generated and there's even more data being generated every day. So you see stories like this one from IDC 20, more than half of the world's data was created in the last two years, but less than 2% of it has been analyzed. A lot of that data is structured data, relational data, so you can store it as tables, process it efficiently using SQL and so on. But a lot of the data is also unstructured data, and much of that unstructured data can be viewed usefully as graphs of different kinds. In graphs, you have nodes or vertices and edges. The nodes represent entities, the edges represent binary relations between entities. And then in most applications, the nodes and edges have different types. And for each type, the node or the edge may have a whole bunch of different properties. So there's a topology of the graph there's all the property data, and we support a particular format that's called labeled property graphs. Some of our customers want to deal with graphs that have roughly a trillion edges. So we're talking about very large topologies and also a lot of property data. So that's the volume aspect of the argument. The time to insight part of the argument says that in many application areas, there's a certain window of opportunity. And if you can, analyze your graph data and get insights within that window of opportunity, then that gives you a competitive advantage. If on the other hand, the analytics is too slow and you get the insights after that window has expired, then you might as well not have done the analytics at all. And so these are the two sides to the coin. Lots of data, they need to be analyzed very fast. And so that is our imperative at Katana high-speed analysis of large unstructured graph data sets. Where do these graphs, property graphs arise? What application areas, what verticals? So the circle in the middle of my chart over here shows you some of the areas in which we have seen a use for graphs. 
I'm going to focus on a handful of them, the more important ones, in my opinion. So at the top right part of the circle, uh, you have security. So graphs are very big in security, as you guys know, in particular in areas like intrusion detection, fraud detection, anti-money laundering, and so on. We have worked in the past with BAE systems. They were interested in building a system for real-time intrusion detection in computer networks. They were using an approach that required them to build very large graphs that are called interaction graphs. And then the way that they did intrusion detection was by mining this interaction graph for forbidden patterns or blacklisted patterns. So we built a system for them that they deployed for DARPA. We have a customer in the identity management space. They have very large graphs. They would ultimately like to go to graphs with about a trillion edges if they can. One of the things that that tells you is that you really need a scale out solution if you want to be able to go for verticals like that. Graphs show up in other areas where you might not think people use graphs. So for example, in the electronic design automation area or EDA area, this is basically circuit design tools. Circuits can be looked at abstractly as graphs as well. So the pins of the gates correspond to nodes. The wires correspond to edges. So abstractly, you can look at circuits as graphs or hypergraphs. And then it turns out that a lot of the things that they do in designing circuits, such as logic synthesis, partitioning, placement, routing, static analysis, can all be looked at as graph problems and then solved using parallel graph algorithms. In fact, we're part of a big DARPA project that's building open source tools for circuit design based on our graph engine. We also have engagements with a major tools vendor in this space. The final area I'll mention is uh, medical knowledge graphs. So this is the medical and pharma areas so they have these uh, big knowledge graphs and what they want to do is to be able to mine these knowledge graphs using AI and machine learning techniques in order to do hypothesis generation for drug discovery, for example. So if you exploit the knowledge graph, if you extract insights from the knowledge graph, you might get to promising drugs more quickly than if you were just doing a search without exploiting that knowledge. So we have an engagement with a major pharma company in this space. So if you put together all of the lessons that we have learned from these use cases, I would say that these are the main ones. So a scale out solution is essential in some verticals, FinTech security identity, you have big graphs. So lots of nodes, lots of edges, lots of properties. So a scale out solution we believe is the only way to go after those verticals. Single machine performance nevertheless is essential. I would even say critical. So you cannot ignore single machine performance just because you have a scale out solution. And there are two reasons for that. One is that in EDA and pharma, what we have seen is that the graph sizes are relatively small. And so they want to stay with a single machine for simplicity. Although even there, we're starting to see people ask for a scale out solution, but two machines, four machines, nothing very much bigger than that. And the main reason for that has to do with the economics of the cloud. Another reason is that even when customers have enormous amounts of data, they want to get started with a single machine solution as on a small subset of their data, just to get a sense for your system, what you have to offer. And if they like what they see, then they're willing to invest the time to scale up as they gain experience. And so single machine performance is critical. Scale out performance is also critical. Everybody who does databases knows uh, getting data in and out of the system is very time consuming, so efficient ingest is critical. Many terabytes of data that need to be moved from, say, S3 buckets on AWS into memory and back. So efficient ingest is very, very important, and we've spent a lot of time optimizing our ingest pipeline. Querying and analytics should be tightly integrated. So in many of our use cases, we see there's a big graph. The users want to have a query on that graph. They want to get a subgraph as a result of that query, and then they want to do analytics on that subgraph. So that sort of interoperability between querying and analytics is extremely important. And then the final thing that uh, we have noted is that uh, most of our customers are already on the cloud. And uh, so your solution must be cloud ready, but some of them also want on-prem deployments 
So it would be good if your system could be deployed in both of these ways. At Katana, what we're doing is taking those lessons and acting on them to build a system that satisfies hopefully the requirements that I listed on the previous slide. So the graph engine is architected to handle massive graphs. So we have tested it publicly, uh, tested it with some of the largest publicly available web crawl graphs like WDC 12, which has 3.5 billion vertices and 128 billion edges. We come from the high performance world. And so performance is very, very important to us. We have a lot of people in the company who are experts, both in shared memory, GPU and distributed memory performance. Scalability, as we've said, is extremely important. We have shown that our graph engine scales to up to 256 machines at our Texas Stampede supercomputer. And we also run, as I've told you, on AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. We're also able to engage with diverse verticals. So there are many opportunities as I've been talking about earlier in health sciences, FinTech, identity management, intrusion detection, EDA, and a lot of other areas. Here's a cartoon level picture of what our system looks like. So in the middle, we have a scalable graph engine and it has three parts, CUSP, which is a streaming partitioner, Galois, which is the graph compute engine within each machine of your cluster, and then Gluon, which is a communication runtime that manages communication between machines in your cluster. When you have a big graph, the graph is at rest, as they say, in something like AWS S3 buckets or Google blob storage. And so in order to compute with it, what you need to do is to bring it into memory, if you have a scale out solution, you need to shard or partition the graph between the different machines. In our system, that's the job of CUSP. It is a customizable partitioner. It supports all the partitioning policies that people have used in the literature. It's also, you can write your own partitioning routines very easily. So you point CUSP to a graph that's sitting in AWS S3, say, you say how many machines and what partitioning policy you want. You can pick a default partitioning policy otherwise. And what CUSP does then is to shard the graph and then build a small portion of the graph in the memory of each of the machines in your cluster. To compute within a single machine, we have a graph compute engine, which is called Galois. This is a very sophisticated runtime system and a collection of data structures that work together to allow you to write very efficient graph processing algorithms at a high level of abstraction. So to give you an idea of some of the complexities in this area, unlike in computational science where you're computing over regular grids uh, most of the time, and so you can get load balancing between all the cores on a single machine. Nowadays, we have 12 cores, 24 cores on a single machine. So you need to keep them all busy and you can do what is called static load balancing. You take the grid, you partition it more or less equally between the cores and you're good to go. Graphs, on the other hand, are very irregular. The work is generated dynamically. And so it's very, very difficult to do static load balancing. Instead, you need to do what is called dynamic load balancing. And that is done in our system using a very efficient technique that's called work stealing. So that works under the covers. It's not something that you need to worry about as an application programmer. In addition to uh, uh, load balancing, you also need to worry about locality. So even if you have, let's say, 24 cores, all cores are not in the same package. The way these things are packaged up nowadays, you might have four cores on a given package, and then you have six cores, six packages to get you the number of cores that you want. And that sort of inter-package locality, so to speak, which is sometimes called NUMA locality, is very, very important, and your load balancer needs to be aware and exploit NUMA locality as well. So there are a lot of complications in the underlying system for graph computing. And our graph engine, the Galois graph engine, takes care of all of those for you. So you can write programs at a high level of abstraction and rely on the system for doing all these complicated things like dynamic load balancing for you. When you shard the graph, you need to worry about what happens at the boundaries between different shards, between different partitions. <clears throat> so that's where Gluon comes in. Gluon uh, gets information from CUSP. So Gluon knows where the nodes are at the boundaries, which nodes are at the boundaries, which edges are at the boundaries. And Gluon basically makes sure 
that even though the computing is happening in parallel on different machines, ultimately the result that you get is as though all the partitions, all the machines saw the same view of the graph, even though each one is only working with its own partition. So there's a lot of very complicated functionality that's in there. We expose this to application programmers at a high level of abstraction in C++ and in Python. So in C++, basically what we give you are a couple of programming constructs that you need to use, and then some data structures, and then you're good to go. So you don't need to worry about load balancing, communication, sharding, all of that sort of stuff is done automatically for you. We're exposing the same kind of functionality in Python as well. So the Python will be compiled to C++ and then it will run on the graph engine. So you can orchestrate the graph engine from Python. Uh, the Python is not interpreted, so that avoids these problems like uh, a poor performance because you have to take the global interpreter log and so on. So the Python code is compiled down to C++, which then runs in parallel on a graph engine. One thing that this lets us do, because we have a simple way of orchestrating the graph engine from a high level language, is that we can quickly spin up graph analytics libraries, graph mining libraries, graph AI libraries, and so on. And I'll show you just a handful of some of the routines that uh, we've already implemented uh, as a result of demands from customers. What we're adding to this is support for querying property graphs. So we are supporting OpenCypher, which is a language that was designed at Neo4j. And so we will have uh, support for OpenCypher by the end of this quarter. And so we would have graph querying, and then we have all of these analytics libraries that could interoperate with the graph querying. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about is adapters for third-party libraries. So a lot of our customers already have their data in MongoDB or uh, JSON files. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we spend a fair amount of time at the company doing is just writing these ETL adapters to read data in from these systems into our system. So I hope that's given you a high level view of what Katana looks like inside. Uh, here are some of the library routines that we support. We support many more, but uh, I'll just mention these. So the usual pathfinding algorithms like single source shortest path, K shortest paths, that turns out to be more useful in a lot of applications than single source shortest path. Node ranking, so page rank between a centrality, community detection. Uh, uh, let me talk a little bit about graph mining. So we have a couple of uh, the world's experts in graph mining working for Katana. So frequent subgraph mining is what a lot of our customers want. And uh, our guys were able to design new algorithms for frequent subgraph mining that run hundreds of times faster than any algorithm that we have seen published in the literature. So this is one of the advantages of having a deep stack company, so to speak. We have people who can design new efficient graph algorithms, but we also have a lot of systems expertise all the way down to the storage level. We've talked a lot about performance, the importance of high performance. So let me just show you a few performance results from some of our uh, customers. So the first is in the area of graph querying. So this is querying on a medical knowledge graph that's called Kemble. It's a publicly available data set. The customer we are working with asked us to uh, run a bunch of queries on the Campbell data set just to get a sense of where we are with respect to performance. So here is the query. They asked us to run extract oral drugs and associated targets for heart failure treatment from Campbell. And ultimately that basically translates down into a small graph like this labeled as you can see. And what you want to do is in this big Campbell host graph, as it's called, you want to find all the instances of this particular pattern in the host graph. What I've shown in the chart at the bottom right is uh, performance. This data set is not big enough that it's worth running the query on multiple machines, although we could do that. We do do that in Katana. So these are numbers on a single AWS machine with four cores or eight threads, 64 GB of DRAM. And you can see for that particular query, Katana took about 12 seconds. 
they're also evaluating a different system. And on that system, it took uh, 4,000 seconds. And so you can see our query engine runs roughly 300 times faster than this other system. Now, this is a particularly complex query for several reasons. One is that this subgraph is quite big. It's complex. And in addition, the number of matches that are found can also be quite large. So you might wonder, well, what happens if uh, I have simpler queries? So maybe the number of matches is small or the query itself is small. So do I pay a penalty for that? And if so, if most of my queries are simple, well, then maybe I'm going to pay a penalty for a lot of my queries, even though once in a while I might benefit from the fact that for complex queries, Katana does better. So these charts are there to show the point that even for simple queries, like the one in the top left corner, so retrieve compound activity details and assay for target human PDE5. So that's a very simple query and the number of matches is quite small. So as you can see, both the other system and Katana solve this problem in less than a second. So you don't really care about performance when the query returns in less than a second. But what these charts show you is, even if your queries are simple, number of matches are small, we have a performance advantage. And of course, if your query happens to be complex, returns lots of matches and so on, then the performance advantage really benefits you as an end user. <clears throat> One of the things that we have learned is that uh, a lot of our customers have graph data, but then they also have other kinds of data. <clears throat> so whatever solution that uh, you give them needs to interoperate with some of the other things that they're doing. So this is again from our medical pharma use case. So what they wanted to do was to add what are called chemical cartridges, in their case, RD kit. So, I've taken the query on the previous slide, extract oral drugs and associated targets for heart failure treatment. And then what I've done is to add some filtering to it that they wanted to do afterwards. So return the top 10 chemical compounds, most similar to a given compound like benzene and their targets. So the basic idea is you have the query, then the, when you submit the query, you get a bunch of matches back. And then you want to filter those matches according to some criterion, in this case, Tanimoto similarity. So that is done using this RD kit third party library. And because we have a simple programming model, we realized that we could actually deploy RD kit in parallel. Since we get a bunch of matches back, we can actually process all of those matches in parallel for this Tanimoto similarity using data parallelism. And so this uh, chart over here at the bottom right shows you the scaling of Tanimoto similarity again on one machine. As you go to eight threads, you see you get almost perfect speed up because you have a lot of matches and then you can filter all of them for Tanimoto similarity in parallel just by using our system. So this is just illustrating the importance of interoperability and how you could do it in Katana. Graph analytics, this is a different set of algorithms where what you're trying to do is to discover global insights by processing the entire graph. So shortest paths between vertices, global ranking of vertices, community detection. So lots of problems in this area, lots of algorithms. I'm showing you charts for two problems. One is page rank, and then the other is between the centrality. Both of them are ranking algorithms for vertices. For page rank, uh, I'm showing you two web crawl graphs I just focus on UK 2007, the chart on the right. So that has about uh, 4 billion edges. And these experiments now are showing the scale out performance of Katana. So eight machines on AWS, each of them with 16 cores. So we're talking about 128 way parallelism there on eight machines. And uh, what you can see is that uh, Katana is able to solve this analytics problem substantially faster than another scale out solution in this area. The same thing is true for Indochina as well. <clears throat> a few months ago, one of our customers wanted a scalable algorithm for betweenness centrality, which is used heavily in the security area. And what we found was that existing algorithms didn't scale very well. So our guys invented a new algorithm called Min Brown's betweenness centrality or MR between the centrality. 
<clears throat> and this chart down here shows performance for Clue Web 12, which has about 42.5 billion edges. So it's a very big graph and uh, it needed 64 machines on our Texas supercomputing center just to load the graph. Once you've loaded it, you can do between a centrality in 16 seconds. And then what this chart shows is that as you increase the number of machines, you shard it across more machines. We went all the way up to 256 because that's how big our allocation was. You can get the time down to about 1.5 seconds or so. So you get very good scaling, even in scale out mode, which is often quite difficult to do for graph algorithms. The final set of charts I'm going to show you are in the area of graph AI, which has become a very popular and hot topic. So the idea here is to take a graph and then do things like classification of vertices or link prediction in these graphs. I'm going to just focus on the chart on the right, which shows our scale out solution for the Reddit data set. So the Reddit data set has about uh, 0.2 million vertices and 114 million edges. The nodes represent Reddit posts, and then there is an edge between two of these vertices, two of these posts, if the same user happened to comment on both of those posts. And then what you need to do is, given this graph, you need to be able to classify the vertices, the posts into what are called subreddits. So this is a standard challenge problem that everybody is working on over here. Uh, what this chart shows you is the training time for this particular problem. And uh, we are showing scaling as you increase the number of machines. So on one machine, you can see it takes about 350 seconds to get to a certain level of accuracy. And then add your, as you add more machines, your accuracy doesn't drop, but your time to completion does drop. And you can see we get very good scaling for this particular AI application as well. With that, let me bring everything together and summarize. So at Katana, we believe knowledge graphs are the next big thing in big data. Of course, you folks have known that for a while. You've been doing a lot of applications, a lot of verticals and pushing knowledge graphs in those areas. I think what we are bringing from the Katana side is systems expertise, expertise in high performance computing, performance programming, and so on. Many application domains, pharma, fintech, security, EDA, identity. So I'm looking forward to coming back to KGC many, many times and working with all of you to make graphs as ubiquitous in big data as relations are currently. With that, let me stop. I'd like to thank all of you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions.